and welcome to our favorites. That's right. We are counting down each of our top ten favorite movies of all time. We already rolled through mine. You can go ahead and check that out in the previous episodes. Now we are on to Jake. And Jake, this is your number nine pick. Indeed. Can't remember. I can't Last remember time we covered Blade Runner. La- right. That's right. Last time it was Blade Runner and this time. Fun fact. You guys ready for this? Both me and Jake have our top ten. It's by Ryan Johnson. Because that man is literally one Squeaky. of. Squeaky. He's what? Squeaky. You heard him talk? He's funny. He does kind of <laughs> have a funny sounding voice. But I love him. I love him so much. And Jake, why is one of his movies your number nine favorite movie of all time? Well, what what is it too? <laughs> oh well, uh, so if you go back to 2012, right? Yes. Are you looking at the letterbox page? 2012. Go back to 2012, Jake. There are three things that Jake loved: science fiction movies. Check one. Time travel. Check two. And Joseph Gordon. Well, Levin. check three. Yeah, one of us here saw Fifty Fifty eight times in one day. <laughs> okay, but was actually, it? no, no, 50, that's 50 not is fair. A good it, movie. It was you three watch times, times in three days. I don't know if I could watch it three that times much. for three days straight. No, that's nine no, no, no. times once. <laughs> you watched it three days in a row. I watched it three days in a row. Yes, three times each. Shut up. That was a hard <laughs> time in my life. I didn't know that. Are you okay? <laughs> oh, well, but now, who is? <laughs> that's a fair point. Anyway, we're talking about... Wow, that was... Oh. Ooh, a little voice crack there. Anyway, really I, I went, it I went, I went I, dicky on that I'm one. I'm Ryan Johnson. I directed... <laughs> what's the name of the movie, Jake? We're talking about Looper. <laughs> yeah! Ryan, we love you. It just I, 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 you know, Coming from really someone who has a nasally higher range voice and you know can, someone I who has you know same. a dog whistle voice, <laughs> we appreciate you. Is it a dog whistle or is it more like an opera whistle? This is the same thing. It's not that bad. He said it's in a high that pitch. Was it that bad? <laughs> He's going to try to deep it. Was it that high? Ugh. That's this wow. Is how I'm talking now wow. for that's, It's funny because you're talking at the same level that I always talk, and I am not a deep What are you all talking person? about? <laughs> I can't relate to you. Uh, you, can't, you can't relate to my smolder of a voice. Okay, yeah. Calm down there, bud. Tell us about Luke. What are you talking about? <laughs> I can't, I can't push it lower. 2012 open. Jake. <laughs> 2012 Jake loved Looper. I. Good movie. It. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a good movie. 2023 Jake is a little different. Um. I, this is probably the one of my top ten picks that is gonna that that, that seems to fall in my opinion of it do you think he will fall out of your top 10 entirely i could probably remove it from my top 10 and not um not have it matter too much in my head um the thing is i loved it because i loved joseph gordon love it and there's a lot of things that work about this Mm -hmm. there are like i love ryan johnson's ambition in the time travel storytelling aspect, I love a lot of the way that the world is set up. And if you don't think too hard about it, you don't. That's time travel in general, though. Yeah, but like, and I I, I love a lot of the actors in it. Paul Dano. Dano. I forgot he was in this, and I saw his face like Paul freaking Dano. That's because Dano. what happens to him is so scarring that. Um, you kind of lock it out, but uh, Jeff Daniels is also in this. Emily Blunt's in She's this. Great. The funny cop guy from Knives Out is in this because I think he's in a bunch of Ryan Johnson movies. Is that Kid Blue? Kid Blue, yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, where else have I seen him? Oh, oh. <laughs> um, I think there's just a lot of things that work about this, but I mean Bruce Willis too. It, it's nice. This to, is one of his better better roles, in my opinion. I it's think. it's no over the head. <laughs> It's it's nice to see him in a role. Um, I know this is a long time before he retired, but just mm-hmm. well, he's literally sick now. Like he has. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. one. That's it's one nice to see him exactly. not be the main character because he's actually a really good supporting character. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of merit to the story. Like one of the things that always hooked me was the end of the story. And yeah. spoilers if you haven't watched it. Yes, please go watch it um, if you haven't. It, Loop all, on of, back. all of this. Co- <laughs> 
all of this culminates in Bruce Willis about to shoot um, Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt and Bad Actor Kid. I don't think the kid was that bad. Oh come on! He's a child, Jake. You want him to be a thespian out but, there? Uh, hold up, hold we'll up. We'll get to that in a second. Keep okay. going, Jake. Okay. It, it, it's about to culminate in the reason why this kid becomes Big Bad Boss Man. In the what was the Big Bad Boss Man's not, name? I literally just watched. Um, <laughs> I want to say Taskmaster for some Rain reason. Master. Rain Master. Rainmaker. 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 Um, so he's about to. We're, we're about to see the reason. The moment he starts to become the Rainmaker. And Joseph Gordon-Levitt looks at him and what's he say? It's like, you know, it's the it cycle. played out all in front of me. A loop going around and around and around and around. And so I decided to change it. Mm-hmm. And then he shoots himself. And that just, that ending always grabs me. Oh, I love the ending. If, 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 if there's one thing you I, you two have probably figured out about me, it's that I love movies that take this, this world that there are expectations and there are ways of operating and then has the character break free of that or just slightly shift their perspective like that. Mm-hmm. And so I really latched onto that. And, but it's like there's a butt coming. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. So <laughs> you, of course you would. <laughs> I like butts. I, I, I cannot lie. Big, big butts. <laughs> hey, brother, you can't deny. Are you sure? No, he said you cannot lie. Oh, yeah. I thought I said the You never one. said the other half. Oh, that's the <laughs> other half. Anyway, didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> so, here's the thing. For as many good things as there are about this, there is a lot of screaming just like Yes, oh, there man. is. Um the I will I will say one last thing, well, probably not a last thing that I like <laughs> about it, but one really th- other thing that set, uh, that uh, spoke to me similar to uh is it Bri- Brick? Mm. Yep. Um, so Looper has these over-the-top, like, noir feels yeah. to them, yeah. and I really appreciate that about them. And, like, the over-the-top exposition dialogue type stuff, like, I, I like that. Now, But, like, the more I watch it, the more it's just not paced well. Really? Yeah. Like, it we just- were talking earlier, I just... By the time you get to the farm, it just it just stops and it breaks it in half. Well, I think I I like that it stops on a dime when you get to the farm because. But it stops for a that, long, long time. That's not even an hour in. Really? Yeah, it's like fifty minutes. I remember like, well, it, wait, what? And I sw- I you know moved to see the time. I was like, we're not even an hour in, and we're already here. I will say I. Watched this quite literally two hours before I got here, and I thought it flew by. I really, and, and somewhere to obviously, like I said, Knives Out was in my top ten. So I'm a massive Ryan Johnson fan as well. Mm-hmm. I, we, I've seen Brick. I've seen almost all of it. Not Brothers Bloom. Bloom. That's the only one I haven't seen. Yeah, but I had that one. I had never watched it. I might have to rent, borrow that from you. So I, I won't get it, it back for a year. I gave you the last movie real fast. <laughs> you did. I will give you credit. You did. So, but anyway, so for the pacing for me, I thought the pacing worked really great. I really thought that once he realized that was the kid, like when they, when he got to the farm, I was like, I just thought that was such an interesting, it made me really think how the hell did Ryan Johnson get this movie made in general? Cause it's you mean very, because they're literally killing kids? They're killing kids. It's a high concept time movie. And like. It's just, I can't imagine this made very much money at all. So the fact that he was able to get this produced and made, whoever, and Ryan Johnson's pitching skills must be incredible. Well, I mean, he he somehow pitched The Last Jedi, and we saw how everybody reacted to that. Well, yeah, but I think, yeah, that's a fair point. I'm I'm saying it, because, like, think about it. This is a recipe for a box office bomb if it doesn't go over. I think it did. Yeah. Didn't it? Looking. Just because like, it, it doesn't appear to me, this is not like a super wide appeal movie. It's fantastic. Made 170 million at the box office. So not a runaway hit, so. but it's not a bomb. Yeah. And it's got to be I mean, Gordon Levitt and Bruce Willis are the selling. That's points. the other thing yeah. too. 
I appreciate them trying to make Joseph Gordon-Levitt look like Bruce Willis. I was just thinking but that. He did that not look like Joseph Gordon-Levitt. That jaw is like sometimes, it's, it's like that effect that Jurassic Park has, where if it's in the dark and it's in the rain and you can't, like, you can just kind of see the shape of it, mm-hmm. it works. So they when did... it's in the light, and most of this movie is in the light when you're not in the city. Like, most of this movie is very bright and very dry. Mm-hmm. For me, it's the eyebrows. It See, for so me, it's that funny. lower lip. And you, and you think they... So, I, I was trying to figure it out. They did touch Je- Joseph up. They, like, they put some makeup and stuff on I think he has a different nose, too. But the nose isn't throwing me off. For me, it's the shot when he when the, the thing is late mm-hmm. and Bruce Willis shows up. And mm-hmm. they're showing, like, the... The close up of his face, like the back and forces yeah. they get closer, I was like, oh, he looks so weird. I was thinking it's, the and same And the eyebrows thing. are like, it looks like they, because they did, dyed his eyebrows. Like, it does not look convincing. I was like, that just looks bad. I'm like, this is the most unlike Joseph Gordon Levitt. Joseph Gordon Levitt yeah. has ever looked. I think I was telling Jake on the phone the other day, it's like, I don't even think you need to do that. It's a movie. I will buy that they are the same person just 30 mm-hmm. years. Sure, I don't mind. I mean, it was funny seeing Bruce Willis with a hairpiece on for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah had, that was a weird You had emo Joseph Gordon-Levitt in China killing people. It's like, that'd actually be kind of a cool part of the movie. that did distract, it, but I'm like, that is a really cool thing. I like that montage. That was a cool montage. And so, then it cuts from that I'm image of him trying. shooting to then Bruce Willis in like a warehouse going. I go, that's a weird cut. I think that's part of the yeah. problem is that once they get split up, there's not... Okay. Be careful how I say this. There's not a whole lot for Bruce Willis to do other than kill the kids. Yeah. I'm surprised they got away with shooting the yeah. kid like that grazed his face. Because the MPA is really, really strict on violence towards children like that. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised we saw it. Because it's one thing to have it implied and then you just see the scar. Mm-hmm. But it's one thing to actually see it like graze him. I was like... How did they how? allow that? Literally, how do they get away? Like, this is essentially if, like, I was watching this, I was thinking, this is essentially Ryan Johnson's, you know, like the classic, oh, if you can go back in time and kill Hitler as a kid, would you? This is him taking that idea and making a movie out of it. And I was like, okay, this is wild, but I'm here for it. It's Here's the other thing, like, how do I say this? Upon rewatch and rewatch, I think I've seen this four or five times, yeah. whatever. Um, the TK thing, yeah, is kind of dumb. Like I, they bring it up once at the beginning, feel, and then it's not brought up for like fifty minutes to an hour of the movie. They only, and then and the, but I just feel like it's unnecessary. The only, and it's weird. It doesn't totally fit. I think no. the only reason they did it is just to show how powerful. But or like he's the kid is. he's not talking about just introducing at the beginning he's just talking about having it in the movie period right but i'm assuming it's kind of is because it, to show visually it goes show from being a fairly things. grounded thing outside of the technology of time travel yeah like there's plenty of ways to, for that that to, kid to gain yeah. power in the future other than actually having powers yeah but how do you show that now though and i think that's i think it's better if you don't show it to be honest he's trying to say the the know, the sure. time travel aspect is so interesting as a concept that why do we need this storyline about this kid being super powerful? I think if it's just the kid is a powerful, you know, gang boss in the future, and this is where it all starts because his mom dies, that's interesting enough. Why do we need him to be a superhero? Yeah, because because again, I can buy that someone is a is a is like a godfather type figure, or yeah, mm-hmm. and then like I don't. I don't necessarily need to know exactly why he's a godfather type figure or why everyone's so afraid of him. I would just buy that someone's afraid of him. It's kind mm-hmm. of an unnecessary addition because it's yeah. like all it means it's 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 basically the the baby Hitler discussion of yeah. would you go back in time and kill Hitler as a child? It's like one of those things. It's like he doesn't need to have superpowers to be to be like a threat in the future. He doesn't need that at all. Yeah. It's just saying, "Hey, if we go to the source, we can stop him from going to power." With, course it's like why, why are we i don't but mean to dog on this like it is one of my well at this it's your moment, ninth favorite movie yeah. my ninth favorite movie but it's just like watching it again it's like yeah this isn't quite as flawless as i once thought it to be it is really hard and i appreciate the fact that ryan johnson kind of skirted around how time travel works because once you get into it and no, no matter what i don't care what movie you're talking about what anytime you incorporate time travel it's hard 
there's so many plot holes. There's you can easily always dig into it and just find like loopholes. <laughs> so like it's just it's hard, and, and he just like, really tried to skirt around it. I give him props for that. But he did again. I saw you go like this. So it's kind of he, he just scooted around it. He, <laughs> he just, did do. He, a, he took it and he scooted. He did do a good job of avoiding these standard cliches, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think. The kind of way that he did it, because it was basically, how does time travel work? We don't talk we don't, about that. We, we don't, don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's literally, literally. I do. I do like how they. It's not all about how does this work, or it's not destroying the time travel. It's just a vehicle for the rest of the plot. Mm-hmm. But then it brings up, I because I had to tell him like I had to stop myself because I just kept going like this doesn't make sense. Well, this doesn't make sense. Like the whole thing of like, well, why do they close their own loops? You can have stuff happen like to Paul Dano where it's like. He just sings a song and Paul Dano can't kill his future self. Why don't you have, like, if if you take Paul Dano's guy 30 years and put him in front of Joseph Gordon-Levitt, he's, he's just, shoot yeah, that's it. You have no loose ends. Maybe it's just Why? because they're sadistic and evil. But, but, that, but, that, but that doesn't mean anything. It's like, you, no, it's, you can't it's allow for this person to run amok. And screw up the timeline. So you need to make absolutely sure that they get taken out in this moment. So why would you chance it by having it be someone not? Killed? So here, here's my real, here's my real statement to that. If they would have set it up that way, and uh, Bruce Willis would have popped up in front of say Paul Dano, Dano, he would have f- up. I'm not. Uh, it's one of those like, things. Like the movie, the, the end result would have been the same. The, Although that might have the kinda, movie kind of has to uses that as the main point of the movie, but it's like in all logic of this, it's like also what is with people in casting Paul Dano in roles in which he gets hurt yeah. consistently he's and just, horrifically? He's just really good at. It. I was gonna say he's really good. At he's like, good at gaining sympathy mm-hmm. in a lot of his movies, or you just want him to get punched. <laughs> that's the thing. He's he very excites. There will very, be blood. He does have a punchable face. Yeah, I could. Yeah. But then on the flip side, it's like you feel so bad for him in a lot of movies because. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought it was a brilliant like, I I really like what how um, it was written that how um Joseph Gordon Levitt's character changed because in the beginning he's like oh yep it's fine I'll just kill him and I'll get it over with I won't save him I'll kill him instead and at the end he could have. Kill and he chose to save instead of killing it. I thought once again it was just yeah. That's the thing that I think Ryan Johnson is the best at. He is a true writer director, and I think that really shows in this movie because of just how. And I know like when you like it's like I said logic with time travel. It's hard like, the, the stuff that you're poking at, but like as a script, like it, like I don't know. I guess this is the best way it could have turned out. If I I don't know. I have some things where it's like, I feel like there's an easier solution to this. One of them being like, oh, we talked about earlier. So Bruce Willis knows what happens to Joe Gordon Levitt because he remembers it after he does it, right? Mm-hmm. So if you want to save that kid, it's like, leave now and don't tell me where you're going. But then we wouldn't have the love story. Yeah. Or the I, connection to the. Oh, I know why you don't like the love story. It's not really a love story. She just needed some. That is them. not well, the part. That, you just need that, that is not the part that I was focusing oh. on. But oh, the other one. You know, I was actually focusing on like the actual emotions of the thing <laughs> and the connections between the characters. But no, you had to go right for the screwing. Not for the frog light. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. He takes a long time to get up there. <laughs> <laughs> I still love that you can hear the footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> opens the door I was like that took so long <laughs> that's why I, I, I forgot the, the wife thing it's like yeah. well that's another thing people brought up it's like so in the future everything is so it's so hard to murder people in the future mm-hmm. does that mean it's easier to just kidnap them too can they not trace that and then they burned his house down couldn't they like trace like oh they didn't actually like because they just murdered someone also, they have guns. You can't mur- you know, if you murder someone, <laughs> see, you're picking apart. They have guns. Why would you what, just use the tasers? Because they use the taser on him, but they shot they shot her. It's like, but now they can trace that. Well, no, they shot. Maybe that's to, why they burn the house. But then it's like, okay, I think you're now you're leaving even more footprints. Again, you're going if down you start, too many loops, yep. Man. 
if you start going down, it's like, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like I said, that's time travel in general, though. It is... I, I that's think not like, e- that's not even time travel. That's just the world building of the future. Well, you, the future, like like that's the thing is like I. I but it's don't... not part of the time travel. It's literally within what what they're talking about. How they build that part of that the mm-hmm. future is like. You're not supposed this, to yeah. question how the future works in this movie. I think. No, you, that's exactly right. Yeah. I don't know. The whole the whole thing is kind of built on they send the bodies back because they can trace murder so well in the future. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's like, we kind of got to know. It's maybe like, they why? did send it back in time, just maybe not to him. Like, what? maybe they took her body and sent it back in time to that's another true. looper. It's or funny that they carry that around of it. guns, though, when they have the taser things. Yeah, well, <laughs> I told you how I feel about the gats earlier today, so. Yeah, you don't like how they call them. God, I hate it. Oh, the Which is funny, because that, is, that is that is an old, uh, what, uh, term. Gangster term. Yeah, what was the short range one? The bl- blunderbuss. Blunderbuss. Yeah, because the gets because that's a Marx Brothers joke in a movie where they, they said, "What happened to your gats? Oh, we drowned them, so we got a few gittens." And I was like, "That's right, they call guns gats for <laughs> some because it's thirties." Yeah. So that's just Ryan Johnson using that influence on his movies because I mean, he, you, we've all seen Brick. Brick. Very he, very stylized dialogue. And same thing with Poker Face. Let's say like he is he's phenomenal at that. If you didn't know, Jared, that's a show. I know. It's on Peacock, isn't it? Yes. If With uh Natasha Leone. Yeah. If you haven't it's phenomenal. Please everybody go watch it. Ryan Johnson is so freaking talented. Go watch the show. I can't disagree with that because I still like Ryan Johnson. Yeah. I even still like this movie, just not as much. <laughs> it's one of those movies where the the things to pick apart are more interesting than talking about the good stuff because you know negativity bias and all that. Yeah. Because it is a good movie. It's great, and like, I, 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 I love the message of it. I, like, I, like I love the idea of choosing. That's, that's the part that hooks me. Choosing to save is more powerful than choosing to kill. That, like, I really, or just, really, or just choosing a different path. Yeah, 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 and and, and like and everything with him. That's the only thing I just remembered. The fact that they take their like, like he's a junkie and they take their drugs through the eye drops. Yeah, that's cool. That's touch. such a cool like that's such a small detail. I don't know how they came up with that, but I thought that was really really <laughs> neat. Was the was the this is my favorite movie? One of my favorite movies. I should know. Was the stripper the mom of the second yep. kid? Okay. Because he sees her, and he goes, "Oh no," because <laughs> he knows he remembers her. I still <laughs> that's the thing. I still can't. How the how do they get away with this? How do they get away with Bruce Willis going to kill kids? Like, I, I, don't, they don't, I don't. The only thing is that I they don't show it. Yeah, but it's still like and like he doesn't even like mourn at all. He has you were one saying scene, he takes like three he, seconds. He, he, he's he in anguish for one bit. one little brief scene, and then we cut away. And we cut mm-hmm. back. He's fine. Like that's just it's crazy. Also, that that, that scene where he's shooting up the. Uh, the gangster hallway. Oh, he was just uh, going to town, man. And he's like, that, that was him reliving his uh, glory uh, days as an action star. I was like, okay, okay, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> Wait, so was this like the last really good Bruce Willis action movie that we got? Um, twenty twelve. I'm looking at stuff. He's like, what? You don't like Glass? <laughs> it's an action movie. I got that. That's a wheelchair movie. Um, I I would assume so. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Maybe. What else are you seeing? There's got to be a, a like a diehard movie. I was I was trying to remember somewhere. if there was a new. I'm trying to remember if this is before or diehard. after Red. Before I think Red's like 2010. So it's after. Yeah, or Red's before is what I meant to say. Was he in? One of the Netflix action movies that came out that was horrible. Oh, maybe. I, 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 An Underground Six or. There's the second what, Red what movie. It? There's another Die Hard sequel. There's okay. a Sin so, City sequel. Okay, so that Die Hard sequel I heard was bad. Yeah. Uh, Death been. Wish, the Death Wish remake. Cause that, I heard that was good. <laughs> it's not. The second Lego movie he's in, I never saw that. Oh, I never saw that either. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of like. Isn't he in the Expendables too? That was before this. 
Yeah, it was before. I don't know. Oh, the whole 2010s is just kind of a jumble in my head. You know, me too, honestly. <laughs> a lot going on. I was going to say about the, the scene where he, you know, shooting up all the guys. I remember sitting there like, I feel like there's a way more interesting movie that can carry out because you have all the Hitman guys knowing where Joseph Gordon-Levitt is and now Bruce Willis does, so they're all going to converge at the farm. And that kind of is like, okay, that makes the farm more more of a meeting point. That's why, okay, that's why this place is so important other than the kid. It's like the story's going to wrap up here with all these parties, yeah, but then it, Bruce Willis just takes them out in one scene pretty it does kind of It does kind of like... um spoil itself in a in a way because they show that the kid has powers or like that Emily Blunt is afraid of him and um but then then the dude comes to the house and that's a actually a pretty well done scene like it's pretty intense until the kid ele- levitates him and explodes him like i think because we kind of already knew that that was going to happen as it happens I, I just feel like if the kid was normal. That makes it more... It's like the guy they're literally about to like the, take out this normal kid. Like, he has not done anything wrong. It's like, but when you give him those abilities, that does it's like, well, now he's dangerous. That kind of makes it a little... It's still a kid, and they don't want that to happen. But it's like, but they actually have probable cause. See, it's probably the, better if it's just a but kid. But the weird thing is, actually, I take that back. I don't think they were there for the kid because they, he was part of the gang. And the gang wouldn't want to take out the kid yeah. because if he takes out the kid, then the Rainmaker would never happen. Yeah, that's, but the that's Rainmaker's true, the not part of their thing. Because the Rainmaker's shutting down all the loops, isn't he? he well, you shut down the over. loop, but that doesn't necessarily make, make, make the... Yeah, but they would know thing. that it's the kid, I think. It's and kind it's, of two separate stories. Yeah, it, but they're But that's the thing. If the stories come together, and like you have all the... I, I was telling him, like... What if the, the hitmen are going... They're going after Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. They're trying to kill both. Yeah. Which, why didn't Kid Blue just kill Bruce Willis at the, kid's, the second kid's place if that's what they're trying to do? Plus, they know where Joseph Gordon-Levitt is. Well, because I, I, Kid Blue wanted to turn him in. He wanted to show out that he did this. He could still do it by killing him. Yeah. Because it's well, supposed to be Joseph Gordon-Levitt they want alive because they have to keep him alive. Well, but it's also trying. Kid Blue being an idiot. That's true. <laughs> But then, but then, like I thought, it'd be stealing really stealing Paul. Da- well, stealing dead Dano's bike. The, the, it's like you have all the guys coming to get both to kill Bruce Willis and capture Joseph Gordon Levitt. But then Bruce Willis is going there to take out the kid, and Joseph Gordon Levitt is caught in the middle of all of it. It's like that's such an interesting thing, and it, it doesn't happen because he just takes out all the guys really easily. It was funny when he yelled, oh, but that's. It's about it, and then the he mentioned the the Paul Dano bike, that, the him coming around from the side of the van was really goofy. I was like, yeah, that thing's really loud. I'm pretty sure they would hear him coming a mile away. Sorry, <laughs> we all just stopped talking. It's also very interesting. Um, like, I don't know. I'm so torn because like. There's a lot of good ideas at the farm. I don't. I just don't think it's executed well. Yeah, it's like if there was a reason they can't just leave. Like I said, yeah, leave and not like, tell them where they're going, and they're like they're stuck there. It's like I kind of like the thought of they're waiting, and you have the two different parties coming. Like I kind of like that, and it's not. I feel like really there. I feel, I know you like the montage, but I yeah. feel like if that was built out as a story more, and then you watch it play out in this kind of like 500 days of summer way where you're alongside seeing, the farm. Yeah. Where you're cutting like, back and forth. You, I yeah, like that. You have like one for Joseph Gordon Levitt and then one for Bruce Willis. And then the farm is kind of in the middle where like every time Bruce Willis is like daydreaming or asleep or something, it cuts to the flashbacks yeah, instead of the montage where, and that builds more of his character. Yeah, that's, uh, that, I think maybe just, that's the problem. He's not really a character in this. He's, he's a, He's, he's a silhouette, more and, or and, less. And I like the diner scene when they're talking to each other. Yeah, that's a good that's scene. A it, it is. It, there's no way Ryan Johnson wasn't thinking about the scene from Heat when he's writing that, because that's like the big scene of that movie. You know what scene I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. He, yeah, like, it's like, that, that's that's exactly what that's taking inspiration from. Yeah. Uh, uh, I do like the movie, the... 
the, the thing that gets me is the, the scope of it is so big when it starts, and I think mm-hmm. having the farm and everything be – everything feels a lot smaller from where we started. And I think that's I what threw, like th- has that. thrown me off both times. I, I like that it shrinks in size because I, I, I just think that's where Ryan Johnson, um, his uh, talents are in, like, smaller-scale stories but more character-based stuff. So I was surprised. Like, the, the first time I watched this, I was like, whoa, we're going time travel. Whoa. And then the first time, because I don't remember, I was I liked it, but I wasn't super into it because it dropped all the crazy, like, fun time. I wanted more, more, more time travel, and it, and I got bored with, like, the more character stuff. But now this, I'm like, this, I liked. See, it's, it's when, funny we say that we wanted more and more time travel, and then, uh, what, 11 years later, they give us more time travel with the Flash, and we're like, eh. Well, now, well, just like, I don't know if you're saying this on camera or off camera. Just time changes. Right. He just passed th- through. And- I, I think he just made the scope too big to then shrink it. I think it should have stayed small the whole or time. Then sh- shrink it too quickly. Yeah, it's such a Even. it's such a much bigger thing at the start. It's it's kind of like that black bear, white bear black bear episode of Black Mirror. What is it? Is it white bear? Oh, white bear. Yeah. I don't like that episode, and everyone loves it. And it's because it the scope of it is so big, and then when it reveals what it is, it goes. Sh- Mm-hmm. And I'm, it's like, oh, that's it. I'm sorry. Did you say Black Bear it's or Black Mirror? It, yes. it, it's the White Bear episode. White Bear of episode of Black, Black Mirror. Mirror. I didn't know if it was Black Bear or White Bear. I couldn't remember the name of the episode. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna spoil. <laughs> do, you want, do you care if I spoil it? No. And I'm gonna spoil anyone who's not seen. I think it's season two of Black I think Mirror. So. It's basically like there's this like big thing happening in. It's either Britain or the world, and everyone's like on the run, and the main character, she does not know what's going on. And it's really interesting. And it's one of those things, the second they solve what's happening, it's, it, the, the, it's this, she's on a TV show. So, it, like, the Truman Show. Yeah, it ends up being, like, I she's know. a contestant on a TV show that was, like, like drugged and taken there or something like that. Yeah. So, basically like she w- game. There really yeah. is nothing new under the sun. Basically, she wakes up in this, and they've been following her. And instead of this big, like, country or global-wide thing, it's just in this, like, one neighborhood. That's it. And it's like... See, I that, feel I like... I think it was used to a good effect, though, at least in that story. It, it's like, whenever they tease something bigger and then they shrink it, it's like, it's kind of just... It ends up being lesser, because you I made mean, me think, think something bigger and better was happening. I think it's lesser. I just think it's a, it's a change of perspective. And I, I, that's what I think Black Mirror did well, and I think this did that well, too, because the, the movie was never about time travel. It was about Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, like, realizing what's yeah. just what he wants. I think that this shift... So, to that point, I think you're right to say that when we go from big to small, it has a deflating effect, whereas if you're going to shift the perspective, it has to be sort of like a end of men in black thing where it's like you thought it was this but it's actually this and i think i think that looper does that really well in a in a in a subtle way because it's like you thought that this was going to end one way and i'm changing it i'll be really yeah. honest i did not the first time i saw i did not see him killing himself at the end coming i thought i thought that was a really because the entire time like as it getting closer to the climax closer to the climax i'm like how the hell is this going to end like, literally, what is the possibility for how are they going to save this kid? How are they going to... Are they not going to save the kid? Like, I was genuinely really, really curious. And then and him, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. And it like and it shows how his character changed from the beginning to now. I, I just nailed it. I really, really like that. Yeah, I just... Yeah, that's what kind of... The first time I watched it, I was like, yeah, it's good. I'm not a giant fan. And then this time, I was like, I... I don't really like this movie all that much. And it's a good movie. I just, I don't know. I think every, same with you, I think it's going down every time I watch it. It's like, yeah, I can't think too hard about it. And I know that's every time travel, but at the same time, I think other time travel movies, if you break it down, it does do that. But this one, there are some things it hinges on that it's hard to. something like, you know, I know it's not time travel, so it's not one for one, but like something like everywhere, everything everywhere all at once, like you can kind of break that down. But it's not time travel, though. No, but like, I, I like, I mean, the, the only, the only movie that I think handles time travel almost perfectly is Back to the Future. I even mean, then, that, but, but even then, though, you can still like, there's yeah. still stuff that you can. A good one it. that's really good at time travel and it's really confusing is Primer. 
I've heard of that. I've never Actually, seen it, but I've heard of You know of it. what one is the best for time travel? And I, I've never seen it. I've only heard about it. What? Uh, Midnight in Paris. Oh, I really enjoyed yeah. Midnight in Paris. From my understanding, don't spoil it. Yes, I looked at you. I know you looked at me. <laughs> Uh, from my understanding, there's no explanation of it. It just happens. It's not used as a plot device. It's just one little thing that uh, I guess it is. It is it's it's not plot. part of the story. It's just this happens. We don't need to explain it. It's not like a, oh both like where he goes and the present kind of match. It's so just kind what, of a he goes back and hangs out with people. So then, what if they took the time travel out of Looper? I understand How do you that. Do that, that I understand oh, that. I don't. that like. Just say that they time travel back, and then they don't. You don't say. Gang bosses do that, and we don't talk about what it is, and this is why they do it. We just it just happens like this is just our they job. Kind of did that though. Not really. No, they, they, they explain how the syndicate works in the future. Like, I, like, I know they Jeff Daniels is sent back to run everything. That's true. I, the, Jeff, the, the Jeff murder. Daniels character is the I, one that kind of. I do love Jeff Daniels though. He is. Yeah, it is. The way he just picks up the like it's so smooth. He's having that conversation. Kid Blue picks up the hammer and just oh, whack, that, and you just it catches you every time. That got that that got me. Kid I'm Blue getting hit with the door me. always gets me. Yeah. Oh, with the like wait, when they close it on his hands, the the trap door is that what you're talking about? No, the the he's pointing the gun at at Joe Scored Levitt, and then the door just opens and hits him right. Oh in the head. yeah, <laughs> and he fires like, the gun. Poo poo pew. pew. <laughs> I didn't like everyone just like beating up Kid Blue. That was kind of. I do. That was, that was a good run I, joke. And again, I, I don't know how much of this is Joe Scor- or much of what. Um, I don't know how much of this is Ryan Johnson and how much of it is whoever DP. Just other producers or writers. Whoever DP this movie, but like the sequence oh. of him, like the the loop of him, um, you know, going and doing his job and Sweet. coming and getting high and in the in the club and all that. Like that sequence is pretty. Steve Yedlin. Lo- oh, Yedlin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He works with him on like almost all of his stuff. Yep, he did Brick, yeah. Last Jedi, both he, Knives Out movies. The other w- shot that, Brothers I re- Bloom. that I really want to give a shout so, out. So, yes, everyone. Yeah, that I want to give a shout out to was when they're in the diner and the uh, the gang comes in, busting, and the camera does like a weird, like, down turn, like, um, are you Diagonal sure? Diagonal kind of thing. Are you sure that's like, not when he falls off of the, the uh, fire escape? No, it was in the diner. Okay. Because 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 what happened was, it was I th- I think it moved down, to show Joseph Gordon Levitt, while Bruce Willis was shooting against him or whatnot, and then it moved back up and then it did the same exact move and he wasn't there and I love it when like they use like the same camera moves. Or stuff like that, and then something is different. I just think it draws a lot of attention to that, and it does it really well. It's a really, yeah, really good effect. I mean, like we've been saying, this is a good movie. It's it's not. There's no denying that it's a good movie. It's just that there are just things about it that are, for me, inconsistencies. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I don't even know that I'd call them that. It just for me, it's. It's just changed so much, and even like where I'm at right now would have just changed so much. It, it's just weird how movies like that work when you watch them ten years later. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because I feel like I did the opposite. Like the first time I watched, I was like, "Oh, it was good." I want a little bit more sci-fi, like a little crazy, like like uh, that kind of stuff. And this time, I was like, "Oh, this was fantastic. I love that it said screwed it to the sci-fi stuff and just focused on the character work." I thought. It, did it really well. Oh, well, we we well, we put a mental pin, as Drew said last week, a couple <laughs> weeks ago, as well. Like the on the kid acting. Oh yeah. I, I I think with kid performances, yeah, you don't have to hold them to a super high standard, but there are good kid performances. Plus, you can write for kids to make them feel like kids. That kid did not talk like a kid. No. And you can make the case. Well, it's the abilities. It's like he's still being raised. That's a, the same. that's another thing. Why? How do I put this? One? Why? So, so Emily Blunt is his mother, like actually Actual. his mother, Actual. but her sister raised, raised him. him and got killed by him. Like, 
why does that need to be a thing? Because then there's also discussion about his grandfather in those tunnels. Yeah. It, and so why I just that, that it almost it's like it the feels easiest. like an unnecessary complication. I wonder if maybe the, at one point before the movie got to its like final runtime, if they had more in it with that stuff and they yeah, just see, decided like to trim the tunnels, it down. The tunnels thing is really interesting to yeah, me. Yeah, and they, well, because they mentioned the vagrant the vagrant wars or something. Like that. mm-hmm. That's way more interesting than kid makes people float and explode. Yeah. Well, and everything about him killing like his mom before, like that's a lot of traumatic stuff. That's a lot of stuff to work through that they threw away in like one or two lines. So I really wonder if there was more to that originally. And maybe just in the editing bay or something like that. <laughs> there's I mean, probably who like, knows? There's probably like a six hour cut. There's, there's so much um not not plot, but there's just the world that he built. There's lore. so much lore. There's Act, so, it's actually lore, I think. Yeah. Well there's just so much to it. Like I wouldn't be surprised if you could get carried away within this world to tell a story that's like so long. There's like it's 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 super interesting. I Let's get Ryan Johnson to come back to this world. I, I don't know if I, I want to I loop would, for two. I would say. Tooper. I, I, <laughs> tooper. Tooper. I would say this movie was made to be a franchise and have a sequel, but. Uh, like, no, uh, the ending made me say otherwise. Uh, he also, I think they interviewed him around this time. And they said, would you, would you explore the possibility of Looper 2? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Plus, he's now going to make. 10 million Knives Out movies, and I'm going to watch every single one. you damn right. <laughs> I, I, I will be right there, right there that, buddy. After Glass Song, it's like, all right, this you got if, me. if Daniel Craig is like just like Perot, the consistent, yep. it's just him doing that goofy accent and solving these dumb cases, oh, I'm on board every time. Oh, man. I freaking look like... I, it, it hates me so but It hates me so much. That's weird thing to say. That people don't like Ryan because of Last Jedi. That's so dumb. Because of how good the Knives Out movies are. And, like, I just... And oh, how good The Last Jedi is. I know. Just give... And if, even if you didn't like The Last Jedi, I disagree with you entirely. Respect, but I disagree entirely. Go watch any of his other stuff. I just... There's something there you gotta love. It, it has to be. He's so talented. I'm sorry he brought a breath of fresh air into a stale franchise. <laughs> he also directed the best episode of Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah that's he did. true too. Yeah, so. Was that Chrysanthemum? Ozymandias? I'm sorry, what? Ozymandias. <laughs> did you call it Chrysanthemum? I did. Why did I call it that? I, it's a long word? I don't know. I don't know why. Where did I get that? He also directed The Fly, which is a good episode. Oh, no. Nah. Fly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I like that. If everyone hates it, I like that. I what are we talking episode. about? The, the fly episode of the Breaking Bad. Yeah. Bomb. You're going to have to remind me. They're in the lab, and there's a fly. Oh. <laughs> it's called, they didn't have the budget so they for all the episodes, so they had to think of a way a to have a character episode without using a lot of sets and shots. So, it was a bottle, bottle episode yep. in the lab where they talk about things. Walter falls trying to swat the fly, and then I, it is, it's like it's funny how the uh, the stakes are. Well, we can't let it contaminate the batch. <laughs> That'll set us back a few hours or a day. Well, so it's like the stakes are low, but there are some nice character things, and I like the episode. I, I feel there's a lot of good It is a little like goofy, it. but yeah, doesn't bug me. Anyway, the Looper. Anything was, else, Jake, about your favorite? Isn't this the first thing he made after, what would you call it, Ozymand? Ozymandias? Yeah. Um, no, Ozymandias is in 2013. It was? That's when Breaking Bad okay. ended. That's what I was going to look up. It's like so the third to so last episode. after Looper then. Yep. Well, I mean, to be fair, if that's when it came out, they were probably filming these really close together. Yeah, I don't know. Because say this movie, the movie dropped in 2012, so they're probably filming it in like 2010. Filming began in 2011 in 2011. January. Okay. So I'll bet you. my yeah, guess was... is they right after uh, filming wrapped then, he directed Ozymandias. Mm-hmm. Or what? What other? If there are any other episodes he directed? I think it was just Ozymandias, Mandias, or in the fly. I think it was just those two. But anyway, Jake, anything else about Looper that you loved? I think I like the way uh, whoever composed it used the ticking of the clock in the score. I actually do remember really liking the score. I didn't notice it as much this time, but oh, yeah, of course the score with like the clocks. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love. And I like how it ended with Emily Blunt closing the clock. That was 
he's he's good at bookending his stuff really well. Oh yeah, I mean, the whole reason this became one of my favorite movies was the ending of it. So there you go. Anyway, no, no, that's all I got. All right, thank you guys for listening to today's fantastic episode, Jake's number nine pick. And make sure to tune in next time for Jake's number eight pick. But until then, if you want to see what, say else we what got my going number on, eight pick is, yeah. so they you can, can watch it. Tell them after Jared gives us where you can follow us online. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the funny TikTok. <laughs> Get it, clock TikTok. Ah! <laughs> tick clock. Huh? That's it. Prequel movie. Joseph Gordon Levitt. We find out what makes him tick. Anyway, uh, you can listen to us uh, on Google and Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify. And if it's YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, ring our bell, rate us on all those th- things, Ab- and and follow our website Absolutely. thingy. Absolutely. You can listen to us in, uh, through there as well. But yes, tune in next week for Jake's fantastic number eight pick, which is... Uh, the Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah, buddy! You, you only to have watch. to watch the first one, but you can watch all three if you want. <laughs> now, you now, can, you can watch all it. three extended editions yeah, if be, you want. Now, be specific, Jake. Is, is your theatrical? favorite theatrical or extended? So, <laughs> oh because I don't have access to the theatrical cut, <laughs> we are going to watch the extended cut. Same, yeah, same way. The only one that I have is the extended version, I'm, too. I'm pretty sure that they've done a pretty effective job of making that sure that that is the only cut out there. Really have. Except for like the original run of DVD or Max on HBO Max, there are two versions. Okay, but if you have any physical copies, you're right. You probably have the extended edition. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, I have both. You do? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Also, oh, that's gonna be great. I am so excited for that episode. But yes, that's coming out next week. So make sure to watch it and then tune back in one week from today. So from all of us here at All Sleep Media, thank you so much. For listening to today's episode, make sure to tune. Make sure to stay tuned next time. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Boop.